Hello, welcome to my video, and today we're going to learn about how to make a volcano. Take a look at our materials list. I've got clay, a plastic cap, which you can get off of any bottle, a tray of some sort, some clay tools, twigs and foliage, and anything else you might want to include. In this video, I use clay house paper clay, which worked okay, but I think I would recommend air dry clay, and in that case, you may have to do some additional stuff to your clay in order to make it work. For this lesson, I created some coloring worksheets that show different types of volcanoes, and I wanted to share with you my final result for the volcano that I sculpted in this video. So I started out by getting my clay ready. This is stone clay, and I wanted to talk about this because you can easily make something similar if you have model magic and sand. Just mix it together. So here is my paper clay. It's very similar to model magic but I began by kneading it together and that's just pressing my hands together and smushing it up. Next, I wanted to show you how to get some color into your clay. This works really well with Model Magic and you might have heard of this technique before. All you need is a water soluble marker, so Crayola markers work really well, or Prang is which I'm, what I'm using right now. All you're gonna do is push the tip of the marker all over the clay, all over the surface of the clay, and start kneading it, like I said before, you're just mushing it up in your hands and make sure that all the color spreads out evenly throughout. So as you can see, I took a ball of the paper clay and I started to smush it and roll it in between my hands. Um, this is actually called coiling and it's used by ceramicists. We are going to use it to start to wrap the bottom of our volcano. So make two of these or more. So once you have those ready, you're going to take the cap and start wrapping it around the cap and make sure that you're doing it on top of your tray. Once it's wrapped all the way around, you're going to start stacking the coil on top of each other. So see how I just wrapped it around that bottom and put it right on top of what I just wrapped? That's what you want to do throughout the whole thing. So grab your next coil and finish where you left off. But as you're wrapping, you kind of want to smush the stuff together. If you were doing this with air dry clay, like Crayola air dry clay, you would have to do what's called scoring and slipping. But that's for another time. So instead of scoring and slipping, I just kind of scraped the sides up as I went. That's one of the qualities of paper clay. I think that if you were using model magic, you wouldn't have to do any of this. It would just stick by itself. But for the time being, this is what I'm going to do. And if you have the same clay, I would recommend you do this too. As I coil it around, I decided that I wanted my coils to be closer together so they came more to a tip at the top of my volcano. The volcano that we're going to talk about in Indonesia, Krokotoa, kind of looks like this too. As I go, I want to make sure that I'm kind of pinching and pulling and scraping things so that they stick together really well. You want to use this opportunity while the clay is still wet to get the shape that you really want. In this next step, I use a different type of clay, but this isn't necessary and you can just use the same clay you've been using this whole time. I just decided to use this because it came in a kit and I wanted to try it out. This is the new clay and what I did was I just rolled it into a ball and started to poke a hole in it. My hole is going to be poked through all the way so you're going to have kind of like a little donut. This is going to be the very tip of our volcano so we want it to be kind of shaped like a cone. But depending on what kind of volcano you're looking at, not all volcanoes come to a cone shape. Though, for now, I'm going to stick to that cone-shaped volcano. The way that I'm going to do that is by pinching and pulling upward. As I go, I decided that I wanted it to come to more of a point, so I decided to squeeze it around my finger and pull it up. Notice how I'm kind of pinching it in on itself, but not closing it all the way. This part of the volcano is called the throat and at the top is the vent. 
This is where magma turns into lava and pours down the side of the mountain. Indonesia's volcano, Krokatoa, is one of 452 volcanoes that lies on the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. So once you're done with the top of your volcano, you can put it on top of the coiled piece that we just made. For this next part, I decided to use some more materials that I have for my kit. What came in my kit was this bag of cream clay. Um, in ceramics, this is actually just slip, which is watered down clay. I used the slip to make the creases in between the two types of clay blend together. Similar to a scientist, I had to make a hypothesis or an educated guess about how this clay would work. When I first picked up the clay, I observed it, I looked very closely, I kind of moved it around in my hands, I saw what it could do, and I based some of my prior experience working with other types of clay to guess and come up with the idea or the hypothesis that it would work similar to slip. Scientists like volcanologists use the scientific method to make predictions about when volcanoes will erupt. It's important that volcanologists or people who study volcanoes keep a close eye on volcanoes and observe what happens to them over time. When Krakatoa erupted in 1883, nobody really expected it because not many people had been studying volcanoes back then. Notice that my fingers got really messy when I was using the slip. You might want to have a wash rag near to help clean up. I got to a point where I really wanted to try the stone clay, so I decided to cover up the slip with this clay. Like I said, you can make this clay just by mixing sand in with Model Magic. As you can see, I took some of the stone clay and broke it into smaller pieces, then flattened it between my finger and my thumb. I used more slip on the sides of the volcano that I didn't have any before. Using my palette knife, I spread the slip around so that I can fill all the crevices with stone clay. Now I'm taking my roller to flatten out the stone clay and use it as the ground. Here I'm taking that rolled out piece and flattening to the surface of my tray. Now that it's covering the entire surface of my tray, I can now put my volcano down. But first, I need to make a spot for where the baking soda will go. I used the cap to create a little space for where it can sit. Then I placed my volcano right on top. The last step is just to embellish your volcano's base by adding leaves and twigs and other things that you can find outside. I grabbed these from the bush on my front porch. All you gotta do is just stick them where you want them. The slip came in handy for gluing down things that can look like rocks. I finished it off and now I'm ready for the next step. <laughs> 